Hey up everybody! Right, I've just been and picked me my latest uh, addition to my machine shop. Uh, it's this little Adept shaping machine, a Model 2A. And I've been after one of these mach machines for at least two and a half years now since I saw one on uh, Alan at Retro Steam Text channel. This was a number one version that was hand operated. I think there was all hand operated up till near the end of it, when they were making them until they put this modification on them to make them powered. And uh, I've also seen one on Paul's channel at, at the Necklace Workshop. This is a number two version like this, but I think his has got an homemade mechanical mechanism fitted to it that makes the RAM powered. So these machines then were built from 1930 up to the early 1960s. I've done a little bit of research on them and they were made in my neck of the woods, not far from where I am, on Abbeydale Road at Sheffield. I've done a 120 mile round trip for it, but it's from a, a deceased chap's estate, his daughter was selling everything off, and it's not been used for over 10 years she says. Now, when I got it, there was turnings all over it, as though it's, it's just been left and neg neglected. I'm just going to do a light restoration, and I'm not even going to paint it. I don't like to, like to see antique machines painted up. I like to see them left original, if possible. It's just my personal preference, I suppose, but anyway. Now I don't know what they like. I've never seen one in use. I've never seen I've never seen uh, what capacity sort of capacity they can uh, machine. But I think just for light duty work, I think this will be fine. It just wants this stand beefing up a bit. It's like any machine. Uh, it's the mass of the machine that you need, and the rigidity to be able to take bigger cuts. This one, the number two, has got a table seven inch by six and a quarter, so it's considerably bigger than the number one. Uh, it's also got a stroke of six and a quarter on the ram. I think the number one version's only got a four inch stroke. And I'll just get the camera off the stand and do you a couple of close ups of the state it's in when I got it. Right, everything's moving okay, it's just ev that everything's a bit tight and the reason it's tight, obviously, because look at all this thick gooey oil and grease uh, on it. I've had a close look at all the screws and I think, I think they're in good condition. It's just wants a good general clean, I think. I don't know why this stop's been put on this um, tool post travel must have been for a specific job. It hasn't come with a vice, it's just got this um, angle plate on. Like, like I said, it must have been for use for a specific job. Uh, but everything moves and everything works. It's just that everything is tight. It's got an auto advanced feed mechani mechanism on it. It's just things like this, this clapper box has got a big uh, pivot pin stuck through and as though it's been just chopped off with some shears. And then the gib screws, they're all stuck out too far. The motor fits underneath the bench here. I'm going to get this motor wired up and, and get, get a proper belt and try it. And if that motor doesn't work, then I've got to I'll go to Plan B. I've got a I've got another motor, but it's not quite as powerful as this one. I've got it all wired up, but the cover for this is missing, so I've got to make a cover for that motor. I know the motor works because I already tried that on bench, so I know the motor works. Put some power on.
Well, I'm pleased with that. At least I know everything works on it. Okay. Uh, obviously, there's no speed adjustment on this. Uh, I probably have to look into that either put a double pulley on or put a, a variable control on. We'll see. So I've got to make a, a, a plate for the motor to cover the wires. I will make a guard for this. I might beef the frame up and then I'm going to set to and give it a good clean get these gib screws shortened and, and everything, get everything in how it should be probably find a vice for it and uh, what else uh, I might beef the frame up that it's sat on and I might even paint the frame or the base that it's sat on I'll see but I'm not painting this I'm leaving it original just before I leave you on part one uh, I've had a little think about it while I were doing all the little jobs and uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to in, in a few subsequent parts to this I'm going to make a, another I'm going to hire it and I'm going to make a, a frame and make it look like a, a proper industrial shaping machine uh, obviously on a smaller scale I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, I've got to think think all that through so watch this space and I'll put some, some more parts onto this project I'm going to sign off for now and if you find that interesting give me a subscribe and a like and I'll catch you on the next part thanks for watching then, bye for now